Howdy, hey, I'm Hippio Tech, and I didn't think it would ever come to this point, but I've given up on mechanical keyboards. Hippio, what the hell? Alfred? You're giving up on keyboards? Alfred, I know you're upset. Look, I can explain. No, I'm not I gonna take explain. it. This is ridiculous. It's a misunderstanding. It's not that I'm quitting. False alarm. It's that I just False feel like alarm. I needed to be more honest about this. You want an explanation? Yes. You see this keyboard? Uh-huh. I've been using this keyboard every day for like a year now. Wait. And I haven't been using a mechanical keyboard. What? Isn't that all of key- I'm distraught. I'm broken. Oh, I thought you were quitting. No, Alfred, I'm not quitting. I'm- it was a joke. It was a prank. Not cool. But let me tell you more, okay? I don't care. Okay, just- no, Alfred. Alfred, come back. Please, it thocks. It thocks, Alfred, please. You said thock? Mmm, thock. Yum yum thock. I like thock. Uh. I've given up on mechanical keyboards. Well, howdy hey. I'm Hippiotech, and that's a little bit of clickbait. I guess I should say I've settled down and am quite comfortable with a keyboard that's not mechanical. In this video, I'm going to show you the keyboard that I use every single day and how I ended up making it, and also why it's not actually mechanical after all. Speaking of after all, after all this, I'd really like to end up hitting 500,000 subscribers. So 79% of you haven't subscribed, hit subscribe down there. You'll get an extra howdy hey. Howdy hey. You see how that worked? That was so nice. Now I can hear you. After all these years, Hippio, you're not using a mechanical keyboard? Daily? What the heck? Thawk. That's my answer. Thawk. I'll explain more later. Now, this story begins about a year ago when I went on a quest for Thawk. Throughout my last two years as a keyboard YouTuber, I've used a lot of different mechanical keyboards and other keyboards that aren't quite mechanical. Now, you're probably wondering, what keyboard did I use before all of this? And, well, it was the Eidobao ID80 Crystal. I'll spare you the details, but essentially this was the keyboard that I went back to every day after reviewing a bunch of different keyboards. I'm a creature of habit, probably like you as well, and I like to use one keyboard most of the time. However, throughout the years I have swapped in a lot of different keyboards. But I can hear you, you're saying, Hippio, you said you were giving up on mechanical keyboards, what does that even mean? Please enlighten us. Well, to be fair, it's that I had given up on mechanical keyboards as my daily driver. Now, a big asterisk here to say I'm not opposed to using a mechanical keyboard as a daily driver. I still do it quite frequently for challenges, but here's some proof that I've used this keyboard as my daily driver and oh, what's that? It's not mechanical, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, the story actually begins when I first tried the Niz 87 a long time ago. Now, originally I thought it was quite weird as it was electrocapacitive using rubber domes, but then I set out to make the new Thawkiest keyboard. Yeah, I told you we'd get back to that. I kept coming back to the Niz boards, but the 87 was just a bit too big. So I found the Niz Micro 84, which initially I thought was cool, but uh, it had some issues. Now, full disclosure here, Niz is not sponsoring this video and these are all my own thoughts. The only incentive here is affiliate links, which I have for every keyboard I ever make a video on. But what are electrocapacitive switches you're thinking? Why are they not mechanical? This makes no sense. Well, to be honest, I'm not a scientist or anything but they use a rubber dome and a spring, and it gives them a very snappy yet light tactile-ish experience. They feel incredibly pillowy to type on, and Bruh. uh, wait, why is this a for you spacebar? This is an issue. This is an issue that needs resolving urgently. This is so tiny, my man hands cannot deal with this. What is going on? So the thing about Niz switches is they're only in Niz keyboards. And let's just say, they have some issues, like co-star stabilizers and four use spacebars, what? Now, some of you might remember when I did a video on the Niz Duo 82. This was a keyboard that was supposed to be like the fancy enthusiast Niz board. Also, I know you guys are gonna talk about Topper switches. I've tried them. I just don't like them as much as Niz switches. That'll be a different video. Anyways, in my quest to find the keyboard that I like to use the most daily, the Niz Duo 82 solved the issue of the stabilizers and the big spacebar but it had a big front and was just too bulky. So I decided I could maybe Franken switch those two keyboards together, Franken switch, Frankenstein. Oh, yeah. So similar to high school sweethearts going off to college, I kind of had to force it together to make it work. Either that or go long distance, but I couldn't really make that metaphor work, sorry. Also, I'll be getting into why I'm using this keyboard daily in a little bit, but first Bro. let me take this thing apart and give you my brilliant plan. 
Now the brilliant plan here is to smash the two keyboards together, no not like that, and make one perfect keyboard that fits all of my requirements for electrocapacitive boards. It's got the light switches, it's got the layout I like, and it's not too big and bulky. That was my goal here, combine the best of both worlds, like Hannah Montana. However, I needed some help, and back in the day, I got my friend Bear Creative, aka Toby, to saw up the plate to make it fit. Because the plate was meant for gasket mounts, and the tabs were just not working, you get the point. Now, don't take this out of context, but I really like putting lube on things. Stop, don't, don't leave that comment, I don't care if it boosts engagement. Anyways... I'm going to be taking a little bit of this Crytox 205G0, link in the description by the way, use code HIPPIO to save 5%, and I'm going to be rubbing it on the sliders of each electrocapacitive housing. Now if you want the nitty gritty of how I went through this whole entire build process, I'll link everything in the top right, but this is just a bit of a summary. To build my perfect keyboard, it took over 14 18 plus hours? You're probably wondering why, we'll get into that soon. Then after lubing each of the housings, I just put the little sliders back in, and then the rubber dome bits on top. Now these aren't hot swap per se, but you can switch the springs out and switch the little stems out, if you like broke one or something. Now I mentioned thock earlier. You said thock? And I like the deep sound that these switches make, however I wanted it to sound even deeper, so I put the tape mod on this board, like I put three layers of tape on the back of it, which makes the board sound a little bit deeper and a little bit poppier overall. And then I cut up some foam and filled the case with it. This is a little bit reckless as the case has a battery and this could create thermal issues, but I'm gonna ignore that because it hasn't set itself on fire yet. Famous last words. Then next things next, I just closed up the case and the board magically worked like that and there were no further issues with this build whatsoever, no issues. Nope, we're not gonna talk about any of the issues. Please don't press the space. He pressed the space bar. No. There were some, yeah. There were some issues. Why? Why God? Ugh. Now you're probably thinking, Hippio, this is a video about a keyboard that you use every day, right? Why are there so many issues with it? Why does it not even work at this point? Well, this is a labor of love, so I put in those hours of effort to fix this issue. It was an issue with the plate getting bent during the whole cutting process. It works. And um, it ticks care. quite badly. Throughout the last year of using it or so, I've fixed the ticking a little bit, but you'll kind of see how it sounds at the end. Then to top it off, I used my keycap set and Finikita Lite. It's not available anymore, but you can check out Polycaps Hippo, my other keycap set, with the link in the description. And then, you know, they say the rest is history. When you meet the one, you settle down, you move in together, you get covered in gamer grease. But this is why I said at the beginning, I was kind of giving up on mechanical keyboards, at least in the sense for my own personal use. Like I love reviewing them still. I still find them incredibly interesting and fun to try out and mess with. So no, I'm not quitting YouTube, but oh yeah, the space bar ticks a little bit. Um, I fix it sometimes with some dielectric grease. Anyways, no matter how many different keyboards I use, I can't find a mechanical keyboard that mimics the feel of this. The super light switches that feel nice on my rock climber fingers. I'm just in bliss when I use this thing. Like, it makes me happy to use. That should not be a bad thing, ah, right? I should not have done that bit. Oh God. Yeah, I actually got really dizzy there, oops. Now, here's the thing. This keyboard isn't perfect and I think at some point I'm gonna be upgrading this thing another time. If you haven't tried an electrocapacitive keyboard before, I'm gonna be a, a simp here for a second. They're incredibly interesting. You might not like them, however. They're a little bit worse for gaming, although I don't notice, I'm still a pro gamer. And um, yeah, look, here's my keycaps being super gamer gunked up. I told you I used it for like a year. Maybe it was like nine months, but who's counting? But I like this keyboard for a variety of reasons. It's 75%. We already talked about how the switches are thocky and nice on my fingers. It doesn't look too gaudy, as I like having those keyboards behind me. <laughs> and I've really enjoyed typing on it over the last year. But yeah, I just kind of wanted to check in and gush about the keyboard I use every day. You don't get to do that very often here. I'll put some relevant links down in the description. And uh... I'm still making mechanical keyboard videos, sorry for the clickbait. Anyways, hit subscribe, love ya.